Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q and A emails number thirty-one. And if you guys don't know the drill by now, you send me your questions to m sargent twenty-three at comcast dot net. That's m s a r g e n t twenty-three at comcast dot net, and I will try to read them on Strange World, which is currently on Tuesday nights on truthfrequencyradio.com. And if I can't get to them, and a lot of the times I can't because I get too many phone calls, I will read them in a separate email video like this one. You know, let's get right to it. First email is called 224 Mile Line of Sight. Hey Mark, was neat to hear you read the email I sent you on telescopes a couple of weeks ago. I was happy to find out you are getting and reading real emails. I want to mention a nice proof I heard in the last week regarding the lack of curvature. In my opinion, any observation taken and used as proof for the flat earth has to be taken at sea level, so there is no room for the counter argument regarding changes in elevation due to topography. A buddy in my office was in Rockport, Massachusetts and was able to see 70 miles up the eastern seaboard to Kennebunkport. Maryland, Maine, County Book Park, Maine, Maryland, eh, ME, I think it's Maine. One of the locals in Rockport said that on a really clear day, you can look southwest from there and see the tallest buildings in New York, New York. A flight mileage calculator says it's 224 miles away. That's 6.33 miles of drop, according to the eight inches times miles squared which I am not a fan of using, by the way. This is the furthest line of sight I have heard of. As always, keep up the good work, Mark. Thanks, Mike in Minnesota. And he leaves his phone number. Thank you, Mike. And again, it's, uh, the, uh, the elevation is the key part here. So yeah, you might be able to see the, the building's 224 miles away, but you also gotta figure out how high he is up the, the, the observation post. So, but yeah, that, that could be the farthest. As far as I know, that's awesome, 224 miles. That's amazing. This one is called Firmament. Hello again, Leah here. I saw the Rhode Island license plate pictured on the last video and I can't wait for the real one to come. And actually, Leah sent me the It's Flat license plate screenshot from the Department of Licensing and then the, the, the real plate actually came. So by the way, when you, when you do the plates, I know that sometimes the government or state it says that it may take up to five or six weeks. Most of the time it doesn't. It's, it takes only a couple of weeks because they can, they can crank those plates up pretty quick. She also says, also want to pass on to you a finding that my friend Brooks, who introduced me to Flat Earth, told me about. In the Bhagavad Gita, Hey, there's a song in there somewhere. Chapter 11, verse 20, it directly, I'm gonna, I'll spell it for you guys. B-H-A-G-A-V-A-D space g-i-t-a it directly says this firmament fixed between heaven and earth vocals by kamunda 2005 it's about four and a half minutes into the audio of chapter 11 it is clear that this holy book refers specifically to something that is above the earth separating it from heaven I hope this can provide further evidence to show that there is something more to understand about the possibility of a dome and this earth plane that we live on or in. As always, thank you for your efforts and information. What is important, what an important time it is. So many people waking up to the idea and so many new concepts to consider and further understand. Wishing you all the best, Leah. Thank you, Leah. And I, I will definitely take a look when I can. This one's called, I hope you read. <laughs> awesome. Actually, I probably will read it if you write that in there. Hello, Mark. Earth Clues 11, you are so correct. The Earth is flat with a dome on it, and it proves creation. The people are being lied to by NASA, and when the truth comes out, it hurts, and they don't want to believe the truth. This may hurt your knowledge on what you learned, but did you know that the letter J was never in the Hebrew or Greek alphabet and today is not? The letter J was not in the Latin English alphabet until the year 1630 AD. It is less than 400 years old. The name Jesus is not his name. And if you look up the Latin meaning of the name Jesus, it means earth pig. 
I, I have not heard that before. The name Jesus was made up by Romans. His name is Yeshua. Uh, you guys know how to spell that. I have the correct scriptures that bring back his name. The scriptures reads, I come in my father's name. The father's name is Yahuwah. Psalm 68, 4 reads, my name is Yah, not Jah, like the hallelujah is not hallelujah. If you like to do research on this and do so, find that I am correct. Bill. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Awesome. I do read these from time to time, but not often. This one's called Freemason. Since you are in the U.S. and I am not, is this monument a fact and what does it mean? And it's the George Washington little monument called Free, Freemason and First President. Yes, it's absolutely a fact. It's not a Photoshop. In fact, you want the much bigger one. Yeah, George Washington, they're, they're not shy about that. The Masons are very proud that the very first president of the United States was a Freemason. If you think I'm kidding, look up the George Washington Masonic Memorial. Uh, you think his headstone is something. Look up the memorial. That's bigger than, than a lot of government buildings. The thing's huge and very, uh, I put a lot of money and time into that. So check that out. Yeah, it's absolutely a fact. George Washington was a Mason. No question. This one's called Come a Long Way, Me Again. Hi, Mark. It's Krista again, K-R-Y-S-T-A. Sorry, I keep bugging you. I know you're busy. I just want to say welcome to Canada. I had no idea you moved to Victoria. I lived on the island for five years and I miss it terribly. I live up in Fort St. John in the northern eastern part of the province. I often come south for work training though and go to Vancouver and Chilliwack a couple times a year. I was happy to hear of a meetup that happened in Nanaimo and I am searching for more people of this flat earth persuasion to go ahead and with something like that up here. It's awesome to meet up with people face to face and have people to talk to twitter gets hard after a time with all the trolls and naysayers throwing insults rather than evidence anyway i just want to welcome you to our beautiful province and enjoy your time in victoria it's beautiful there i would love to go back cheers krista and hopefully what i'll do after this is i will send her a quick email with the contact info of the group that meets up in nanaimo which i am sure i will be going up there again sometime in the summer this one's called A Flat by the Seaside, and it's a song somebody sent to me. Hi, Mark. I've been listening to you for around a year now, and you are one of my favorite flat earthers. I've been into conspiracies for over 10 years after an experience I had with what I can only describe as an interdimensional being. Anyway, I'm in a band called Flat Earth from London, UK, and was wondering if I could use your recent Flat Earth number plate video for a music video to my new song, A Flat by the Seaside. I would be hoping to grab the vid, edit it down to just the number plates and overdub the song onto it. My musical influences are mainly Queen and the Beatles. I have attached the song just in case you needed to approve the content. Keep up the good work. Love from England. Kind regards, Lee Hayes. Yeah, you know what? Again, I make most of my videos Creative Commons license anyway. And all the images of my videos I just grab from the internet with the exception of the, the license plates. And look, those aren't mine. Those are actual people around the country and Canada and Australia and Germany and other places. So what I did with this guy is I just took all the videos, I zipped them up and I sent them through a service called WeTransfer, which is very, very good if you're, if you're transferring stuff less than two gigs. They'll transfer everything for free. It's simple. You just put in the email of, of the person you're sending, your email, and you, you attach your file. If there's multiple files, use a zip and that's it. And it works really great. So I sent this guy all the license plate files. And if you guys want to look, you know, any, anybody can use anything for anything for when it comes to me. I, I'm never going to copyright strike anybody. So have fun with it. And hopefully he did. In fact, I may have to look this guy up and, and see if he actually did turn his song into, uh, if he did overlay his song over top of the video. So that's, that's great. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Good day to you, sir. I have re recently found your work through your appearances on several different podcasts. I have always been a conspiracy guy, even being as young as I am, 27. <laughs> yeah, you are young. Spent some time in the military and have always had a thirst for knowledge and trying to wrap my head around what's actually happened in the time before me and what is currently going on. I haven't had a chance to watch your clues videos yet, but I did have a couple of questions. One, what are your thoughts on the Bermuda Triangle? Is it possible to believe that they may actually have a device present in the water or a structure set up to aid in the cover-up of plane flight patterns or ship routes? 
possibly some type of EMP or anti-radar, which would explain all the disappearances of lost aircraft and ships. Yeah, I'll answer these in order. The Bermuda Triangle is absolutely real. There's some, something really, really spooky happening out there. Is it part of one of the the lost continents, you know, of Atlantis or the the rival continent Mu, D Mu, by the way? I don't know. It may be. Uh, there could be some lost technology. It seems like something's broken down there, though. It's some it's Maybe some old leftover military technology or high-tech stuff that's just been malfunctioning. I don't think it's a trap necessarily for a deliberate trap for our ships. If it was a trap, it'd probably be much, much better, and you can you could uh, set it up differently. But I I think it's real, and do I think it's part? Do I think it dovetails into the flat Earth concept? Yeah, you bet I do. How does it dovetail? How does it dovetail into the globe? I I think it's part of something bigger. I think it's remember the Bermuda Triangle for me is part of an older civilization, an older version of us. If we are version seven, then. The whole Atlantis, Bimini Road, Bermuda Triangle thing. What version were they? Were they five? Were they four? Don't know. Question number two. With the dome idea in place, would the conspiracy of chemtrails be there to help in masking said dome, or are they used in controlling weather inside the dome? A uh, little of column A, a little of column B in that case. I, I think they're both used to help mask the dome and also perhaps control weather and maybe multiple other things on top of that. Could there be genetic manipulation? Sure, possibly. There's been a lot of speculation on chemtrails. Do I think chemtrails are real? Yeah, you bet. Do I think they're they're just one level, one dimensional? No, I think they're 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 being done for several different reasons. We're probably not going to know to, about the chemtrails though to the very end. Number three, is there a correl correlation between your theories and clues and these random disappearances of all the recent aircraft? You mean like the ones, the Malaysian flights down the Indian Ocean? I, I don't know if there's a direct correlation, but yes, those planes aren't tracked. And one of them was at least one of them was a, tri a 777, a flagship made by Boeing and you know, the, the state of the art when it comes to commercial aircraft. And it just drops off the screen and nobody ever finds it in the black box. And it's never, ever found. And yeah, I do think they're related because remember, when you go offshore, the, of any continents, especially in the southern hemisphere, once you get about 150 or 200 miles where there's no other islands within that that zone, you know, 150 miles, 200 miles in every any direction, your GPS system drops off and it just says approximated latitude and longitude. Now the plane may think it knows where it's going, but when you look at plane tracker, there's no latitude and longitude coordinates, which is very very interesting. So do I think they're related? Yeah, yeah, I do. Last but not least, I appreciate your time and I wait your response. I enjoy talking with other people and not only gain more information in a specific area, but to gain other perspective. That's from Rin, R-Y-N-E. Thank you. This one's called, Joseph, it's sent from Iowa. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. It's a picture of the Wizard of the famous Wizard of Oz scene where the dog is pulling back the curtain and showing the wizard, who turns out to be just a man from Kansas, I believe. And it was sent from one of the license plate holders, otherwise known as It's Flat, Iowa. And I think I included it in my slides. Hopefully I did. If not, let me know and uh, I will put it back in. This one's called Waiting for a Fla False Flag. Hey Mark, it's Jeremy Browning from Mississippi. I follow just about all the information that I can get my hands on after having my eyes open to the truth on Flat Earth about a year ago. I was just listening to your Flat Earth Q&A emails 30 video on YouTube and heard you read the one from the Marine Preacher offering to do security at the upcoming Flat Earth Conference. That made me think about another YouTuber that did a video recently talking about how the powers that be might conduct a false flag attack of some sort in order to demonize the Flat Earther movement. For example, with the whole Pizzagate thing that came out during the election from the Podesta emails talking about the pedophile rings and Comet Ping Pong Pizza Shop. Shortly after that information started to come out, a lone gunman walked into the Comet Ping Pong Pizza Shop and that was used to demonize anybody looking into it further and to push the narrative of fake news. 
There are many other false flag examples I can list, but I think you get my point. Obviously, I hope it does not happen, but uh, if some type of false flag event happens and is used to demonize flat earthers in some way, I can't say that I really will be surprised. We both know the powers that be will go to any lengths to protect the status quo. Just something to think about. Thank you for what you do and keep up the good work. P.S. Free, feel free to read this on one of your Q&A videos and you can use my name. And... Uh, it's yeah i already did don't guys if you're gonna give me permission you got to give it to me in the beginning of the email or the subject line you can't wait till the very end because i don't read these things all the way through when when i screen them i, I just kind of glance at them real fast and see if they, they seem coherent and if they do i'm going to read it but i try to read it like firsthand i don't like to, to re read it all the way through twice and yeah, it could I mean, there could be a false flag event, but if you're going to demonize flat earth, it's going to be tough because you're drawing attention to it. Let's say you blew up a post office and the guy that did it claimed to be a flat earther. You all of a sudden are now giving more press, more publicity to flat earth. You're just throwing gasoline on the fire. There's, no, there's nothing you can do to really suppress this thing other than what they're doing right now. And adding, adding more to it, no, it, it would... A, a mainstream topic, a mainstream false flag event, what are you going to do? You could try to demonize Flat Earth, but then you're just going to make it taboo and people are going to look into it anyway. It's like, oh, I should look into this. No, don't look into Flat Earth, man. They're crazy. They're insane. They're extremists. And you're just going to add more, more to it. This one's called, thanks for posting our next meetup on April 10th. You may find this interesting. Two things all of us had in common. This is about the meetup in Colorado, the Flat Earth thing in Fort Collins. The things they had in common, we had a variety of people at our meetup, a professional juggler, glass installer, insurance, retired people, truck drivers, contractors, social worker, and a stay-at-home mom, all ages. But the two things that had in common, one, nobody in that group owned a television set, and two, none of them cared about watching any sports whatsoever. In fact, the phrase hate sports went around the room. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's an issue. Yeah, guys, if you guys are doing meetups, find out the common grounds between you. Uh, that, that's interesting observations. And I know that the Flat Earth Colorado group is meeting every every week right now. They're going to do it every Monday. And I will do trailers for as long as I am able. This one's called Time to Flatten Things. Mr. Sergeant, I've been a Bible-believing flat planer. Is there a correct term? Since the moment I stumbled upon the idea, I've been blogging for years where believers and unbelievers alike have appreciated my self-journal style blog. And it's called wayneoutthere.com. However, I lost a few readers last year when I started on the Flat Earth topic. When That's also at wayneoutthere.com. He's been sending me the links here. I've been eating up articles and videos on the topic ever since, but I've been truly seeking a brother in the Lord who roots the topic in the Bible. Rob Skiba is pretty good, but it was this video you just launched that finally motivated me to reach you. And uh, this video is exactly what I've been preaching to believers around me. Hang on, I might as well click on this and see what it was. It's called... The Gift of Looking Stupid, Flat Earth and the Mark of the Beast by the YouTube channel, The, the Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. Hmm, okay. And he goes, this is why this is important. So small talk aside, I'm looking for some kind of Bible-based fellowship surrounding this topic. I feel the desire and need to somehow pull together the believers of the world to work together on presenting this topic because there is a high risk of deception and truth marring. I noticed you seem to be rooted somewhere around myself here. I'm in Delta, British Columbia, just outside of Vancouver, pretty close to the border. I kind of desperately wouldn't mind grabbing a coffee with you somehow. Aha. Uh -huh. Worst case scenario, I want to thank you so much for your work and want to pray a blessing over you that you may continue to grow in the truth and be separated from this world as the Lord is working in my life the same way. Be strong and of good courage, Brother Wayne. Nice. Awesome. And yeah, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to have time to necessarily go over to Vancouver. I mean, if somebody wants to do a Vancouver meetup, yeah, maybe I might I might go over. But me, people one on one, it's going to be kind of tough. I get I get a lot of those requests, even up here in the Northwest. So, but but thank you, and and hopefully you, we will get together in in some sort of meetup coming in. This one's called YouTube Payout. 
Hey Mark, just thought I would let you know that the payout of what he's meaning is monetization of videos on YouTube is about $1,000 per 1 million views. So you don't have to be resentful about the two websites having close to 5 million views. You only lost out on about $5,000. More importantly, you have provided a platform to reach an audience in their own way. That's from Mike in Minnesota. And yeah, because I was wondering about that. I, as you know, I, I didn't even monetize my channel for the first 15 months. And I, on top of that, I made a Creative Commons license. So several people took my clues and they put them all together in one big video. One was called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. And another one was called Under the Dome Full Documentary. And each of them has have two and a half million hits right now. Each of them. And which means that I, yeah, I gave just on those two videos alone, I, I gave away five grand. And there's a whole bunch of videos that, you know, everybody else has been monetizing too. And I don't mind, honestly, can you put a price tag on getting the word out there? So everything for a reason. And I'm, I'm glad. I, look, I didn't generate two and a half million hits on, on my mashup that I finally ended up doing called the Flat Earth Director's Cut. Now, do I have a, a few million hits on the, on the clues individually? Yes. And the playlist is, has done very well also but I, I am not resentful it's just it's just funny that that uh, that's what it turned out being get I still get phone calls and emails every day from those two videos just those two videos alone let alone Yoda's channel and other people that, that have hundreds of thousands of views which is great it hits a different demographic and I if you give me credit in the description hey great wonderful if not not a, not a huge deal uh, my phone number's there and my email's there so people know how to get a hold of me. I should have probably put my YouTube channel in the videos because people, a lot of people will write me and say, oh, I watched the video. Would you got anything else? It's like, yeah, I got a few things. I think my YouTube channel has 500 videos now. So thanks, Michael, for letting me know. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, hi, my name is Jan. I would like to know more about Flat Earth and of of other planets are flat. I believe our planets work like Russian stacking dolls, a giant tree with a planet on it and a giant tree on that planet and endlessly glowing like, oh, is that the Nordic? How do you spell that? Yggdrasil, Y-G-G-D-R-A-S-I-L. I'm from Norway. There you go. So I believe in Norse mythology. And if you know about other things, I wish to know. And I believe I sent her the my youtube channel that's usually i would just send people you know but i'm going to do that again because that was sent a little while ago and i'll send a quick reminder to her this one's called my five-year-old glober mark i just went down the rabbit hole in the last 10 days what if what the f <laughs> seriously she just wrote what the f we live on a motionless flat plane after hours listening to you, Dave W. and Jaronism, Eric D., ODD, and many more, what got me convinced was the lack of water curvature. I live in the land of 10,000 lakes, and to think all the time I spent fishing, staring out over miles of water, and the truth was staring me in the face. With that said, I was talking to my five-year-old Joel. He's in preschool. I told him that the earth was flat. He replied, you're silly. My teacher, Miss Anderson, says it's round like a ball. I then told him, I know she thinks that, but it's flat. He says, you're wrong, daddy. <laughs> I tried the same conversation with my seven-year-old Jesse with similar results. I then realized what flat earthers are up against. I have four brothers and two sisters with wives and children, 16 people in total. During a family get together, I brought up the flat earth. Oh boy, I didn't see where this is going. And proceed to show two brothers your intro to flat earth video. And after dinner, I discussed flat earth theory. Man, you are just asking for it. With all the family members in the same room, I'm explaining how water can't curve and the eight inches per mile squared test. My teenage nephews said, that's crazy. My brothers seemed skeptical at first, but then they started saying the typical moon landing satellite space photos. I gave them the truth back with both barrels. Hopefully you didn't shoot him for real. I thought uh, I saw some glimmer of hope, or at least I planted a seed. I also mentioned this Monday to my boss, dude, what are you doing? The water curvature test. He's a big boater. Needless to say, he was intrigued. I'm going to send him your clues link to watch. <laughs> I'm going to buy a nice zoom camera and laser to do my own no curvature test this summer, like a Jaronism's laser test, just to convince my family and friends. For me, the lack of water curvature is the easiest to wrap my head around and convince other people. Thanks, Jeff Barth. 
I, I'm going to say his name because you know what? He's putting himself out there already with his family. Jeff Barth, B-A-R-T-H. He's a project manager out at a company in Minnesota. Awesome. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth Mentioned in LDS LDS Conference Talk. Mark, okay to read on show if you would like. See, that's exactly what you should do. Okay to read on show. Because I will read it. I really enjoy the videos in the radio show. I woke up to this first with Matt Boylan and some of his videos, then with you and Eric Dubay. I love learning and searching after the truth, and this has changed my view and perspective on the world. I am already a religious person. I'm a member, oh, I get it. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as Mormon. Flat Earth has actually solidified my belief in God even more so now. We have these general conferences that are broadcast all over the earth every six month, months where we hear the church leaders that we sustain as prophets, seers, and revelations. We believe they are similar to the prophets. In the Old Testament, for example, Dieter F. Uchtdorf is one of these prophets and gave a talk called What is Truth? This link as the text and a video. In, he, in it, he mentions flat earth twice. Now, here are some excerpts. Now, never in the history of the world have we had easier access to more information. Some of it is true, some of it is false, and much of it is partially true. Consequently, never in the history of the world has it been more important to learn how to correctly discern between truth and error. Part of our problem in the quest for truth is that human wisdom has disappointed us so often. We have so many examples of things that mankind once knew were true, but have since been proven false. For example, in spite of one-time overwhelming consensus, the earth isn't flat. The stars don't revolve around the earth. Eating a tomato will not cause instant death. And of course, man can actually fly, even break the sound barrier. The scriptures are filled with stories of men and women who misinterpreted truth. You will find even those who still claim that they have evidence that the Earth is flat, that the Moon is a hologram, and that certain movie stars are really aliens from another planet. And it is always good to keep in mind, just because something is printed on paper, appears on the internet, is frequently repeated, or has a powerful group of followers, doesn't make it true. At the time I just thought, wow, really? Because I heard this talk before I went down the rabbit hole, but all the evidence adds up, all the experiments people are doing, and all the lies and deceptions from NASA government and other agencies. This led me to see if my church or anyone from it has mentioned it. Well, I found it. And this has led me to think that some of my current leaders may not necessarily be what they say they are, just, uh, or, and they are just as deceived as everyone else is. Reminds me of this, Matthew 24, 24. That's a good number because I was born on the 24th. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Anyway, thought I would let you know that the LDS church has leaders teaching its members that this flat earth stuff is not truth. Well, I don't believe that. The earth is flat. Keep on the good fight. Little about me, I'm a mechanical engineer turned software engineer. And I have shared a lot of this flat earth stuff with my family, wife and kids, and they believe it too. There's just too much evidence that disproves the globe. Thanks, Matt. Awesome, Matt, good for you. And thank you for that info, that's fantastic. This one's called Alternate Book Title. Alternate Book Title. Hi, Mark. It's Steve from Minnesota. I am listening to you on Parabnormal Radio Interview from April 1st. As you were mentioning your book, The Sky's the Limit, it made me think of another way to say it. You most likely already have, but how about Disguise the Limit? The Limit of the Endless Plane. Keep up the great work, brother. Steve. Awesome. This one's called I'm in Albuquerque 2. What? I've watched... A few, oh God, I get it. I have watched a few of your YouTube clips and just saw the one about the Albuquerque City Council meeting. I would love to meet and talk sometime. I've been awake to the reality of this world for a long time, but must admit, Flat Earth has upset my apple cart pretty good. Wouldn't surprise me if they lie about that too. Please call me if you're in Albuquerque and I would like to meet. Sincerely, Wendy. And she spells it W-E-N-D-E-E. -E. And yes, Wendy, the person at the Albuquerque City Council meeting was 
uh, name, well, he said his name was Mark Sargent, but it, it wasn't actually Mark Sargent. It was uh, just a, a, a guy that, that used my name, kind of like the, the Robert Paulson thing. And I'm very flattered that he used my name. That's awesome. But it wasn't me. And I wrote I wrote her back and, and said, no, sorry, it wasn't me. I wasn't in Albuquerque. Sort of like the people that uh, I had a guy write me and say that uh, he wanted to meet me down in Florida for the Florida meetup. It's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just doing the promos for these. I saw, I'll do a promo for your meetup, but I'm, I'm not going to fly out for, for just a meetup. I'm going to fly out for the international conference, which is going to be in the fall in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. But the meetups, uh, if it's Northwest, yeah, maybe. But not uh, generally, I'm not going to fly across the United States for that. This one's called Admiral Byrd. Is there any evidence, Mark, that the wall or dome was the cause of some of his aircraft losses? Did they crash into an invisible wall? I don't know. I, it's, it's possible. It could have been advanced technology they were going up against. The, the, there's all sorts of stories about what happened during. If you guys want to do the research, if you don't know what we're talking about here, you can look up Operation High Jump. From 1946, the first mission that Admiral Byrd went on after World War II ended. He was there for the signing of the surrender of Japan and then went and led an aircraft carrier group down to Antarctica. And after they got down there, they didn't really talk about what the heck happened. I mean, the, the official version is scattered all over the place. Anyway, this guy goes on to say, enjoy some of your views as well as Eric D's. The general theory of relativity is like being dropped into a labyrinth without hope of ever escaping. And that's from SRB. I think that's him. It was the CIA that stigmatized conspiracy theorists as to thwart free thinkers like you and me in our quest for truth. Awesome. This one's called, please read. It's a real email. No BS. <laughs> See, that's right to the point. And yeah, I probably will read it. Hello, sir. My name is Will. This email will be very informal. It's on my phone and it's very late at night. Sorry for that. With that being said, I have a question. It's a thought provoking question. Your thoughts on it would be nice, but it's no biggie if you don't. Before I start, I want to tell you that two months ago, my eyes were not open. I was basically a drone walking around out. Sorry, I'm just scanning real fast here walking around out here on a flat God-made earth, thinking I was some damn spinning ball floating through nowhere. I thank you for opening them, along with countless hours and research on my own and numerous damn videos from all types of YouTube dudes. I know it's flat. So if we are truly on a spinning globe, as they say, rotating at X miles per hour, given your location on said ball, and orbiting the sun at X miles per hour, as well as traveling through the universe at X miles per hour, let me ask you this. How in the hell can we travel into space and go to the moon if we are traveling horizontal through the damn universe? He likes saying damn. And yeah, excellent point. And that is, you know, you throw a golf ball out of a moving car, just just drop it just, just straight down out of a moving car. That, that golf ball is going to go backwards because even though it's got momentum from the car, the, you know, unless you can tell me the gravity of the car is going to pull that golf ball along perfectly parallel, it's not, it's not happening. Anyway, he says, so if it's hard for you to conceptualize what I'm asking, I'll try to break it down. Just, just want I'm picturing here. I'm reading this verbatim, guys. So for this understanding to be simplistic as possible, let's just say we're on a ball. Let's say the moon is directly north of us. The galaxy is traveling east at x speed the moon and the sun all the planets and so on travel at the same speed in the same direction as the galaxy forget about the orbit and relation to the sun and all that bs okay so we're in a spaceship heading to the moon we leave earth's atmosphere no longer bound by its gravity as the golf ball thing i was talking about but let's see where he goes with it we are now in the vacuum of space and our own entity within that space in between the moon and the earth now mind you we left earth traveling north horizontal to the east direction that the moon earth and everything else is traveling how aren't we left in the dust flying there all alone we were never traveling east at all we weren't bound by earth's gravity or traveling inside its atmosphere anymore we aren't at the moon we are all alone in space a vacuum with no gravity thus not allowing us to travel in the same direction as the earth as we did when we were bound by its gravity so how aren't we left there all alone looking north at absolutely nothing four question marks and five excla exclamation points while everything else is traveling east 
as fast as hell. We would go from looking at the moon and the entire time we were looking at the atmosphere to a vanishing from our sight completely as the moon as we left Earth's atmosphere. It wouldn't even be funny. No, it wouldn't. Our heads would have to snap fast and hard in whatever direction in order to catch a glimpse of the damn thing. Our ship is its own entity. It was not a part of the Big Bang, therefore not traveling at the speed of everything else in the galaxy, nor the direction of said galaxy. Yeah. Not explaining that. I don't think, if, if you can figure out, let me know. I don't say the Milky Way galaxy is gravity either. I heard that from Ball Earther the other day. I quickly shot that crap down. Sorry, I rambled. Have a good night, man. Sorry if it's real, real late. And what was this guy's name? Uh, his name is Will. So thank you, Will. And yeah, you're absolutely right. The, what, he's, what he's getting at is if, forget about the Earth spinning on its axis or going around the sun, they say, mainstream science says, that the whole entire solar system is traveling like a, like a sideways dish, like a sideways frisbee at half a million miles an hour. The point is, is that when you go from body to body, you're going to have these points in between where there isn't any gravity at all. So what would be, what's, what's to keep your ship if you're traveling like from here to Mars, for example, that just, just the, the, the solar system just flies away from it. You know, how can, how can the ship compensate for the massive, I'm, we're talking about a massive speed. If you believe mainstream science, the fastest craft we've got doesn't even travel 20,000 miles an hour. And the solar system is traveling at 500,000 miles an hour. So fast, as a matter of fact, that within uh, what a couple hours, you wouldn't even see the Earth anymore or, or any planets. Your solar system would be, you'd never catch up to it. It's gone forever. So how do they explain that? And furthermore, how do they explain going to Mars with, with that in mind? Or uh, here's one more for you. If the Earth is flying, you know, if the whole solar system is flying like a sideways Frisbee, then how exactly are the planets staying perfectly parallel to the sun? Is, is the orbit of the sun is keeping them perfectly parallel? Wouldn't they be kind of dragged behind even a little bit? Wouldn't that, wouldn't they be dragged? And uh, one more, and this was courtesy of the peanut gallery, which is how do comets come back? Like Halley's Comet takes this big elliptical orbit around the solar system. When it, in fact, it leaves the solar system. So when it gets outside, what is pulling it back? Not only is it pulling Halley's Comet back, but Halley's Comet is actually going faster than the solar system to where it, it goes ahead of the sun. It actually it goes in front of it and then goes back. Yeah. Sorry, not buying it. This one's called the Analemma Tower. Hi, Mark. I'm a weekly listener to your Strange World broadcasts on Truth Frequency Radio, though only via your YouTube channel as I don't seem to be able to receive the TFR shows live here in the UK. Hmm. Great work, Mark. Keep it up. Anyway, just a short email to say hi, first time contact, and to run this one by you so that you may wish to mention it on one of your future shows. I'm not sure if you have heard of the Analemma Tower. I have not. A-N-A-L-E-M-M-A -M -M -A Tower. I was watching a video on the financial markets which was talking about how most of the tallest buildings in the world are constructed in the, at the height of optimism in markets. Like just before there is a major downturn and at this current extreme, this tower is now on the drawing read dream board. I'll just give you the link to the website. All will become self-explanatory as I just don't want to waste my keyboard on this crock of crap enjoy and you can just look this up the analemma tower one thing i'll point out though is to highlight the fact that there is currently not an asteroid in position to enable this construction but they will be going fishing for one and place it into geocentric orbit or geostationary orbit that's geo geosynchronous orbit geosynchronous orbit for the uninitiated oh uh my head is hurting again kind regards jason hmm Interesting. Okay. I will look into it. This one's called First Grass Cut of the Year and Woodpeckers on the Bird Table. I got to say, that's one of the most original email titles I've ever heard. You wanted odd subject titles. That's it. Yeah. Odd subject titles about the laser that creates the artificial star. What if that's one of the things on Antarctica? It's a huge ring that effectively surrounds us. It would be perfect per for a projector platform. Rob, staying here at the set, head of the curve. Yeah. yeah very possible. This one's called License Plate Idea. Hey Mark, Suzanne writing you from South Korea. 
I heard Candy call in saying that she got a tag that reads NASA lies, which is awesome. And I had an idea for another tag with a play on NASA, though I don't know if they'd allow it. I, honestly, I don't know how Candy got NASA lies. I don't have a car and they don't allow personalized tags in Korea. So I just want just putting the idea to you and you can put it out for anyone to use if they like. I was thinking N-A-S-U-K-S. You, you, I'm sorry, N-A-S-U-C-K-S. So NAS sucks, you know, because the U here makes the same sound as the final A would in NAS. So instead of NASA, no, yeah, it's not bad. Seven letters, but people who read it probably wouldn't get it. Anyway, just sharing. Have a great one. Cheers. Keep on keeping on. Exciting times. Suzanne Borho, B-O-R-H-O, if people want to find me on Facebook. And she has a couple quotes. But I won't read all of those. One's from Einstein, one's from Edmund Burke, one's from Joseph Jasto, Daniel Borston, and H.L. Mencken. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I love the license plate stuff. I mean, since, since I did the first the one in April, I've already got, what, three, four more. And it's fantastic. We're, we're getting such great stuff. I still don't have one from British Columbia yet. I'm kind of waiting for that one. And the one from the Northwest Territory. It's shaped like a bear. That'd be kind of fun. It's, it, we have license in the United States. The license plates are pretty much all rectangles, but in uh, one of the three Canadian territories, they actually have a license plate in the shape of a bear because a bear is kind of squarish from the side view. Anyway, I'm just saying this one's called debate idea and reference information. Hello, Mark. As you know, you're the easiest guy in the flat earth enclosed world community to contact. So I'm sending this to you first. I will try to float my idea to others as I find their non-social media contacts. First, a thought. I was listening to your interview with Jaron and Missa last night and heard you say for the hundredth time that no one wants to debate flat earthers when you were talking about the show on Paranormal Radio with David Weiss. The thought came to me that flat earthers should start organizing regular debates with other flat earthers or one party debates from the globalist point of view. I'm imagining a presidential primary style debate where you guys are the iron sharpening iron to use a biblical reference, preparing each other for the big stage debates that I'm sure will eventually come. The globalist debater would have to take it seriously during, doing their best to be informed in their side's arguments, including the feeding habits of birds. Ha <laughs> ha. What? This idea was partially inspired from Rob Skiba, who recently moderated a debate between Zen Garcia and Dante Fortson on the topic of Satan's seed. He did a fantastic job. This would keep all you razor sharp on your talking points, which most of you are good at, but more importantly, teach debate composure, which only a few of you are able to do successfully, in my opinion. There could be a peer review panel with feedback for the participants. You versus ODD, Jaron versus Jeffrey Grupp, I would tune in to watch that live. It's just a thought I wanted to throw out there. Secondly, I hate most birds, but I actually remember a few details that I think might be useful to you to end up debating the caller from Strange World 99 last night. I don't think that guy ever got a hold of me. Or maybe he did. I don't think he did though. I remember reading as a kid that some migratory birds navigate by the stars. To prove this, some scientists in 1966 put them in a planetarium and observed as the birds reoriented themselves as the starscape was accelerated because of Zungra, Z-U-G-U-N-R-U-H-E. The birds only needed to see a projection. Hmm. Here's a smarter link if you want a reference. That's good. Also, it is suspected that some migratory birds might navigate and know where to feed based on magnetism. Scientists have found tiny clumps of iron inside neurons in the ears of birds that help them navigate. Hope some of this helps in your preparation. Jeremy in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, I. Uh, the, here's the thing, though. Debating other flat earthers, I mean, yeah, it might help. I mean, we're already squaring off each other as it is. You got to remember that every flat earther, though, starts out as a globalist. We already start out debating it in our own minds. So we are, you know, we, we have to go through that already. And then by the time, you know, debating each other, I don't know if we get, generate that much enthusiasm because I, I, if, if someone's got to be the bad guy, you know, we're talking good cop, bad cop here, protagonist and ad, antagonist. And who, who wants to be the bad guy? Who wants to be the globalist? And I don't know if I could come up with enough decent global arguments. Look at look at Tiger Dan. He, he, he said, oh, yeah, no, I'm going to I'm going to go against uh, flat earthers. And he made it made five videos and then he quit. Never to be seen from again. I wonder what happened to that guy. 
Yeah, anyway. Okay, how much time we got left? So we got time for at least three or four more. Let's do, this one's called Torpedoes. Hi, Mark, it's Bob from the UK. I must say I enjoy your very interesting channels on the YouTube. On the YouTube. I am without doubt becoming a flat earther. Never thought I would, but I am. Not wishing to bore you, but I've been thinking about World War One and Two torpedoes. It's a fact that on average, a torpedo is an average range of between 8 and 12 miles. Well, yeah, back in the old days. Nowadays, they're like 25, 30 or more. And the Japanese had a torpedo with a range of 18 miles. I did not know that. All torpedoes were controlled for depth and, of course, by gyros. Surely these torpedoes would have become airborne missiles. After a short while, due to a stupid so-called curved sea, these devices could have never worked on a globe. This may or may not interest you, but take care and keep up the good work. Regards, Bob. No, weapons always interest me. And that's an interesting point. You're right. If they would have, if it, were, were those torpedoes configured for a globe or were they just configured assuming it was flat? I think they were assuming they were flat because all those torpedoes worked. We didn't see a lot of torpedoes jumping out of the water. That's awesome. This one's called Earth Experiment. Hi, Mark. Would you be willing to send out an open invitation to your listeners to a test to test the following? Each curvature test for those in the Los Angeles area. Film the Anacapa Arch. Anacapa Arch. I think Rob Skiba talked about this. From Ventura Beach, which is about 18 miles apart, according to Google Earth. Place the camera two feet above the water at 18 miles and accounting for a refraction anything less than 148.7 feet tall should not be visible the top of the arch is 40 feet above the water verify the math at metabunk.org slash curve and yeah this uh, uh, rob skiba did a did a test test on this i remember him sorry i'm thirsty i remember him talking about the the anacapa arch it was a very distinct name and he did a video on this so but if other people want to do it absolutely Check it out if you're down in the LA area. This one's called Setting Up a Group or Get Together. Hi, Mark. In a program you recently mentioned a couple of times, that you'd be willing to help an individual with setting an FE group or meeting in a particular geographic area. I live in Fort Collins, Colorado. Would love to meet with other like-minded FE individuals. Did I see that you had some sort of affiliation with Fort Collins? Is this the guy that I already did it for? In any event, I have no idea how to explore with Bono. With I'm 51 years old, surprisingly enough, to do a job. 1825 notes the young people is just very apathetic sorry i i think i already done this one uh but yeah it, the point is is that if you guys want to do a flat earth meetup in your area and you want to host it just let me know you give me just the details you you pick the venue and you send me the details i will i will rip it through a quick template and i will say hey there's going to be a thing out there put a little music to it I, it doesn't take me that long and I'll, I'll do it for as long as i can unless it starts really interfering with other things but so far i'm doing it i've done it for well, the ones i've already done for myself and then the the ones out in fort collins and the one down in orlando so if otherwise other guys want to do it by all means sure and i th i think yeah i think that's the one i already did when, when was this one sent april f yeah, i'm gonna have to get all this guy now i think we already did this one now this one's called Father is an Energy. Arguments went nowhere. <laughs> I'm Mark. I've been a flat earth researcher since February. After a weird series of events, I decided to test out the moonlight experiment myself and found results supporting that the moonlight is indeed colder than the shade at nighttime. I live in Kansas, went to an area of the prairie with zero light pollution. Anyway, my father has been in energy for nearly his entire career. When my girlfriend carelessly brought up the flat earth topic to him on my birthday, he asked my thoughts so he could basically criticize me about it. <laughs> I asked him two simple questions. One, do pipeline plans account for the earth's curvature? His answer, I'm sure they do. Can't you notice the curvature yourself by the roads in Kansas? They are never exactly flat. Two, why don't oil companies drill in the Antarctic? What about the longest held treaty in the world? So no company nor country can have the edge on supposed cut resources. Do you have any suggestions on how to go about asking him in the future? I rarely see my father unless I come home. His firm invests in EMP companies, mostly in North America. He really didn't care. It was nearly impossible for him to question anything. I have colleagues in the energy industry through my father. I'm just afraid of reaching out as I do not want to damage his reputation. God bless Spencer Wilds. Yeah, do not contact his friends on, on the Flat Earth behalf. Don't, don't do it. 
Oh, just put the seed in his head with anybody. I, I know you're enthusiastic. I know you want to tell people. Again, Fight Club is, is no joke when it comes to Flat Earth. you got to size up who you're talking to about this. You can't just walk up to anybody and say, Flat Earth is the greatest thing ever. They will look at you. Get, look at the clues. Look at the first thing I said in the first 60 seconds of my clues. People think it's insane. Even conspiracy people think it's insane. It's because of the conditioning. It's because you're told... It's a globe, it's a globe, it's a globe, over and over and over and over and over again since you were six years old. It's the, the model is sitting, it's sitting in the corner of your room every day when you're in school. It's on the media, corporate logos, movies, television shows, book covers, magazines. Take your pick. Everyone uses it. It's a great icon. And because of that, there's some people that just won't look at it right away. In fact, most people won't look at it right away, including me. So don't do it. Just put the seed in his head. Let it come. If you want to come at somebody, you want to talk to them about it, come at them sideways. Unless you know them very, well, very well. Unless If they're conspiracy people, yeah, you can probably be more direct. But if they're not conspiracy people, come at them sideways. Like, you wonder what I mean by that. It's like, I heard a weird, funny thing on the internet. What do you think? Like the taxi guy in London. All right. How many more can we do? Uh, let's do three more. This one's called Sports Illustrated, Why Athletes Are Drawn to the Flat Earth Theory. And I've got to read that. That was sent to me by Kathy Dunson. Yes, Kathy, I, I will. I know nobody's done this one yet, and I've got to read it. So I will uh, I will definitely check that out if I get a chance. I know I'm, I'm totally dragging my feet on that. This one's from Clayton. It says, Mark, if we live on a spinning ball through space, then someone somewhere should see falling stars shooting up from the horizon in all stages of the star's trail. I have not seen this yet. Have you or someone you know seen or have pictures of a video? Or am I missing something? Thanks, Clayton. No, you're not missing anything. It's absolutely, you're absolutely right. There should be stars, shooting stars going in different directions. Uh, if it, if we're, we're on a globe, you know, they sh some should be going up. But, but now you don't even have to look at the star trails to look at that. Look at planes. Because planes, when they go off in the distance, if it's a curvature, if they're flying straight, should start looking like they're crashing. Like they're crashing into the horizon. But they don't. They just go off into the distance. Oh, well, they're 30,000 feet up. They just get smaller and smaller and smaller. They never look like they're crashing into the horizon. And 30,000 feet up, when they, they, they should at least start going, yeah, they'll, they'll of course look like they're going a little bit closer to the horizon, but they're never nosing down. They're never looking, at, or, or when they're coming back over the horizon, like he's talking with the star trails, a plane should look like it's, like it's going ballistic, like it's going almost straight up and then curving, you know, and then, then leveling off and it doesn't, never ever does. This one's called chat. Oh, it's from Martin Liebke, I know him. Hey, Marky Mark. Now you know. I think a lot of you, and I balls up my chance. That you gave I balls up my chance. You gave me way back. No, you didn't. So now I, I think you meant a bad thing. I don't know all the London slang. Uh, so now I'm very versed in hangouts, etc. I would love a second chance. I've got great Q and A, and so much to talk about of films, like films, so so much. If you can give me an hour, we do get on when you find time. Thanks, Mark. Uh, God bless. Please don't bother if you're busy. This is not for me for views. I want to show it. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, sorry, Martin. I didn't actually read this till just now. And this was, oh God, 10 days later. Sorry, I, I get so many emails. All right, do I have time for one more? Maybe, well, I got to end on a good one. You guys know that I like trying to end on positive notes. This one's called IPS Confusion. Hi, Mark, I'm confused. The Council of Albuquerque announced the infinite playing guy as Donald Couchman, followed by Eric Schultz. At the end of his presentation, he thanked and recognized him again as Mr. Couchman, followed by Eric Schultz, followed by Mike Alvarez. <laughs> Here's the original seemingly unedited version with Globusters. I've seen at least two or three of the original versions. Then I got the shortened version that Nathan put out with him saying that he was Mark Sargent. I think maybe Nathan was pulling a prank. Maybe late April Fool's. No, it was a Infinite Plane Society that was using my name. So no, you weren't you weren't mistaking anything. It absolutely was him. And, okay, let's see if we can get one more. This one's called Flat Earth Conspiracy. Hello, Mark Kloss from Sweden here. I'm fairly new in getting into the whole Flat Earth thing, but I'm getting slowly but steadily sucked in and giving up the globe seems 
a more pl plausible possibility for each passing day. I have a question about the timeline of this conspiracy. Most of you Flat Earth YouTubers convinced the conspiracy is several centuries old, covered up by the help of Masons and others. Is it not more plausible that the science community really did believe and were absolutely sure the Earth was a sphere until the mid-1950s, when they actually had a chance to check things out for the first time in the history of mankind, and then basically went, oh dear. From that point on, decided that the global model had been preached as truth for so many years that they decided it was too late to turn back and admit to the world that they were wrong. I find that more plausible than the complex Masonic cover-up that stretches back to the days of Coper Copernicus. I just feel like that it is a cover-up. If it was a cover-up, it would be more likely that that is newer than so old regards class and yeah it's what i believe i believe that's exactly what happened where we we thought it was a globe for for years and years and centuries and then in the 1950s figured out it was wrong but because you had preached it for so long it was so well established and science was built literally on the foundation of a globe model that you couldn't go back you couldn't. You, you're basically going to commit academic suicide on a massive scale, and you're not going to do it. No, no scientist is going to do it. You're, 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 you would basically be try, helping bring down the own your own institution. Who's going to do that? What what science is going to step forward? Well, it's the right thing to do. It's the ethical thing to do. No, 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 no scientist is going to do that. It's really going to put yourself out of a job right right then and there. No, never going to happen. Let's see if there's and can I get one more in here? This one's called The Way Realist. Hello, Mark. Grace and shalom, my brother. Just wanted to say thank you for all your efforts in attempting to find and know truth. Thank you for being a great source of information and a link to many good directions of travel in my search for truth. I was hoping you could share I could you could share with me three easy ways that I can convey the realist point of view to my audience. I have a ministry here at the VA hospital rehab facility. I'm living in that I am living in. In fact, with so many good examples in scripture provided by people like Rob Skiba and the Tiger Gentleman and your bottom line up front method of teaching, I've won a few fellow veterans over on the flat earth concept. As for me, I'm sold, but still like to confirm more. So more specifically, I would like three quick and easy examples. One being a math type example, another being a practical exercise method, and third, maybe a Google Earth exercise. Something I can show or explain to them to do on their own and then something I can maybe take them outside and execute. You being the subject matter expert, I will stand by for your reply and instruction. Thank you for your time as I know you must be really busy realist. God bless your ministry. Amen. Shalom. Joseph Moreno, retired U.S. Army. And yeah, I'll, I'll respond to him separately on, on that. And then he just sent me a contact info. Yep, got that. Uh, let's see, there's one more. Can I do one more? Uh, yeah, nope, not going to do that one. Let's see, I got to find something simple. One sec. And nope, not going to do that one. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to let's do this one. How about this one? Nope. Also, to. I am just having a hard time. Um, yeah, let's just end on this. Well, this one's called Effie. Hello, Mark. I'm Matt, and I recently came into the Flat Earth Revelation. Just watched one of your YouTube videos and realized that you live in Washington. I live in Seattle. It's awesome to know another Flat Earther who lives in my area. And, yeah, it's, you got to remember, there are a lot of Flat Earthers out there. A lot of flat earthers. The only difference is you can't tell who they are. You could be walking by them, driving by them on the street, and you're never going to know who they are. So to find them, go to YouTube. Go into the, the Hangouts. Go into the chat channels. Put your put your information out there. That's the big one. You want to meet other people. I'm not going to say do what I did, but you got to put yourself out there. I know people like being anonymous on the Internet. I know people like aliases and avatars and, and slang names. Put your name out there. Make a video. Like I'll, I'll use Nicole Cote as a perfect example. She puts herself out there and her email address. If you're a woman, I wouldn't necessarily put your phone number out there because then you get attention in a whole different way. But put your email address out there. Put your, you don't have to be on video. If you don't like you don't feel comfortable on video, and no, I don't, even though Patricia drags me in and puts me on video every week, the uh, put just record something in your own voice. 
and put your, you know, put your info out there. Make yourself available. People will come to you. There are a lot of flat earthers out there. You just got to go find them. You got to, you got to risk it. Put, you know, put yourself in a position, make yourself vulnerable, at least temporarily. You can always shut down your email later or make a fake email account or a second email account. And just put yourself in a position where other flat earthers can reach you. And from there, because they, they're enthusiastic as you are, they're not going to shoot you down. Flat earthers is the most open-minded group there is on this world. So anyway, with that, guys, let's wrap that up. Remember, you can always email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net. If I don't read it on Truth Frequency Radio, I'll read it here. Till then, stay flat.